Welcome to SoMeds 2. And today we want to focus on the idea of H. H in the Bible is an animal or an insect or bird would be hornets. Now I don't know about you. I don't like hornets. Sometimes bees are okay and we talked about bees under B. But hornets they're a little bit different. The thought for today, we protect, when we protect ourselves, we feel more confident to sting others. We need to be willing to move on so we can have victory in our life. Isn't that true? Now, for the scripture we want to look at, uh, Joshua chapter 24, Joshua 24, verses 2 to 15. Why don't you read with me? Joshua spoke to all the people. He said, The Lord is the God of Israel. He says, Long ago, your people lived east of the Euphrates. They worshipped other gods there. Your people included Terah. He was the father of Abraham and Nahor. I took your father and Abraham from the land east of the Euphrates. I led him all through Canaan. I gave him many children and grandchildren. I gave him Isaac. To Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave the hill country of Seir to Esau. But Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron. I made the people of Egypt suffer because of plagues I sent on them. But I brought you out of Egypt. When I brought your people out, they came to the Red Sea. The people of Egypt chased them with chariots and with men on horses. They chased them all the way to the sea. But your people cried out to me for help. So I put darkness between you and the people of Egypt. I swept them into the sea. It completely covered them. Your own eyes saw what I did to them. After that, you lived in the desert for a long time. I brought you to the land of the Amorites. They lived east of the Jordan River. They fought against you. But I handed them over to you. I destroyed them to make room for you. Then you took over their land. Balak, the son of Zippor, prepared to fight against Israel. And Balak was the king of Moab, and he sent Balaam, the son of Beor. Balak wanted Balaam to put a curse on you, but I would not listen to Balaam's curses. So he blessed you again and again, and I saved you from his power. Then you went across the Jordan River. You came to Jericho. Its people fought against you. So did the Amorites, Pezrites, Canaanites, Hedonites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites. But I handed them over to you. I sent hornets ahead of you. They drove enemies out to make room for you. That included the two Amorite kings. You did not do that with your own swords and bows. So I gave you the land you had never farmed. I gave you cities you had not built. You are now living in them. And you are eating the fruit of vineyards and olive trees you did not plant. So have respect for the Lord. Serve Him. Be completely faithful to Him. Throw away the gods your people worship east of the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. But suppose you don't want to serve him. Then choose whom you will serve. You can choose the gods your people serve, east of the Euphrates River, or you can serve the gods of the Amorites. After all, you are living in their land. But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. When we protect ourselves, which means we are self-centered. And when I am confident in who I am 
and my power, not God's power, my power, we feel confident to sting others. Isn't that true? We sting others with our words, when bully them, when we are confident or just feel confident in who we are. We need to be willing to move so we can have victory in our life. And that's God's idea. God wants us to move forward. God wants us to grow. And He is, like in Joshua's time, He has already pushed people out ahead of you so you can enjoy the blessings. Hornets, bees, and wasps, they're almost the same, but they are all different as we looked at in bees. Bees are soft, look for sweet flowers, most of them, not all of them. Wasps and hornets are in the same family. Their mouth is small, so they eat different things than bees. Hornets have a body covered with a special protection. They are also the largest of the wasp family and make the loudest noise. When a bee stings, they die because their stinger is left behind. The hornet, on the other hand, can use its mouth to bite, and their stinger has poison in it. Much more dangerous. We used to call the hornet a yellow jacket because of its color. Its body is yellow and looks for meat. Your arm, maybe, to eat. Hornets are not like other bees. We also have the horsefly. In Canada we have horseflies, and probably in America, and maybe most places there are horses. But this is not in the Bible, so we didn't choose horsefly. It is age. The horsefly can bite as well. It's like a monster fly that makes science move, movies with. I've gotten eaten by a, by a horsefly, and it's like they take big chunks out of your arm. The hornet has an interesting place in the Bible. God used it in Exodus and Deuteronomy and Joshua. God used the hornet for a special purpose. Hornet is not mentioned many places in the Bible. Do you know where they used it? Outside of Egypt, people didn't like Israel. Israel had a lot of people, they were like homeless. They had no physical address. They wandered in the desert. They were a nation moving from here to there, like nomads. But God wanted them to have a set address, a set country, and He had promised Abraham that He would give him land. Do you think these people wanted one million people to move next door? One million Israelites? moving in next door? I don't think they did. Different, they had a different language, they had different God. Everything was against what the other nations practiced and did. They were imposing. But God had promised, and He always keeps His promises. So, how did God move these people? These people didn't, you know, he didn't send them a letter in U.S. Post or EMS or Kakao Talk or Messenger or Instagram or Twitter. He said hornets. Now, maybe you don't want to move uh, from where you are, but if God wants to move you, to another place, and you are saying no, he will help you. Remember Jonah? Jonah said, I don't want to do what God wants, and he ran away. And he got swallowed by the fish, and then he went back and did what he was asked to do. So God uses a lot of different ways to, to help us move. Or, in this case, to help people move so Israel could move in. They didn't even have to fight. 
because all the people ran away from the hornets. It shows a lot about us, this story. Joshua is speaking to the people. He outlines all the times when they cried to God and God came to the rescue. He was like a one, you know, 911 God. And when they obeyed, there was victory. This is an important spiritual principle. When he cried, when you cry to God, you are God's child. He will hear you all the time. Now Balaam, Balaam was, you know, Balak asked Balaam to, to curse Israel and God didn't hear those curses. But when you are God's people, God hears you all the time. And when he sends you, he will take care of all the problems. When he sends you, he will make the way. Now how he does it, or when he does it, may not always fit our timeline, or the way we would do it. But he will do it. God told the people to go into the land full of people who didn't want them. What a crazy idea. And they had to make a choice. Obey and go, or look at the problems and wander in the desert. Now that's not quite a hard choice for most of us. We would say obey and go, because wandering in the desert is definitely not very fun. And sometimes they obey, and other times they follow their leaders and got distracted and wandered in the desert. When they found a problem, like people who wanted to fight and not move, God used hornets, and Israel didn't have to fight. God used many different things, if you look. Sometimes, just noises about an army coming. Sometimes hornets. They had only to obey. Okay? That's the key. The principle is found throughout Scripture. God doesn't always use hornets, and He used many animals to teach people. But when you are stubborn, don't want what God wants, He may use a bad situation to move us, to help us understand that He has our good intention. That's number one. He may use hornets, but we don't find many here in Korea. And I don't think that there are so many swarming that it would move a whole nation. So you can imagine how many hornets it takes to move a nation. He doesn't always use miracles. But often, God helps us and others through circumstance. Things around us to move and encourage us to do what He wants. Now, if you don't have peace inside your heart and mind, ask yourself, what is God trying to tell me? Do I need hornets to bite me to make me move? Maybe I'm just kind of stubborn or set in my ways. I don't want to listen to God. Maybe I'm a little selfish. Maybe, oh, there are so many maybes. But you can answer that question. God wants us to obey what He has called us to do. Not to fight battles and get tired and stressed. When we obey the hornets, go ahead of us and help not against us. The hornets went ahead of Israel and moved the people. So all they had to do is go. They had been to the same place before, if you remember the twelve spies. But they refused to go in. Now, they had no excuse. The hornets had moved all the people, and all that Israel had to do was move in. They didn't have to plant trees or gardens or build houses. They just had to move in. What a great way to take care of your people. For the prayer today, Listen carefully and pray with me. Dear God, 
I like to go my own way. I like to do my own thing. I like to be comfortable and lazy. I need you to move me from my comfort zone. Help me to obey you so I don't find myself in bad situations so much. In Jesus' name. Amen. For reflection, do I need hornets to bite me to make me move? Well, maybe it doesn't take hornets, but maybe a bad situation. Sometimes. What about you? How often do I bring sweetness rather than poison? Now bees, we said, brought sweetness and wasps bring poison. So, we have to think about that a little bit. The third one is, what is the most effective way to move me? Now God knows how to move me. But not everybody else knows how to move me. Not even my wife. Not my children. But what is the most effective way? And the last one, why is it so hard to obey when the benefits are so great? Obeying God opens the doors to all the benefits He wants. The hornets go ahead Everything is escape-proof. We don't have to live in fear. We can have peace, power, and confidence. So why is it so hard to obey? Only you can answer that. I have some ideas, but maybe yours are different. As we end this, we have to think, of, are we hornets or are we like the children of Israel who the hornets have gone before and move? All we have to do is move forward. Next week we look at I. Can you f figure out what I will be? Look in the Bible for how many insects, animals, Birds, you have a tie. Join me.